standing right here and I thought I was the chosen one. There was glass on the ground but it didn't matter. I was hell-bent on running naked down Brick Lane and the reason why was because I was having psychosis. I thought that I was the chosen one. I thought that I was on a mission. I thought all these flats were cloned. I thought all the cars were cloned. I sang at the top of my voice on Valance Road. I was completely gone. I was submerged in a parallel universe. I was hearing things. I was seeing things. I was paranoid. Thank God that my husband was with me. He was standing with me, trying to get me inside, trying to stop me. In the end, he had to call the police. The police came. This is where I have a blackout. I don't exactly remember what happened. But my husband said that they wanted to handcuff me. And I remember I was ranting. And I remember I was naked. And I wasn't looking at the policemen because they all seemed like they were cloned. And my husband told me that they wouldn't let me get any clothes. We were right outside the flat and they wouldn't let me get any clothes. So I went barefoot to the hospital wearing only his overcoat. And I was so terrified because I was told that I had to complete this mission and that if I didn't, all the world's evils would be inflicted upon me. And I thought when I walked into that van, that was it, that they were going to kill me. I've never been so scared. When we got to the hospital, my husband did all the talking. I remember looking at my feet, thinking that it, they had claws. I could hear voices through the walls. I was seeing things, like the whole of London seemed like this surreal, hazy, psychedelic a uh, fuzzy city, I can't really describe it. Everything was so visceral and heightened. Luckily, my husband said, don't say anything, I will do all the talking. And he did all the talking. And they released us from the hospital. And he was wearing his socks and I was wearing his shoes. And I remember walking out of the hospital feeling so much shame, you know. And the only way that I recovered was through sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. And now I'm still vulnerable to psychosis if I'm sleep deprived. I've also had postpartum psychosis twice. But what makes me really, really angry is that I was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder in 2003. But not once during the eight years that I saw these mental health care practitioners. I don't even remember how many, how many people that I saw. Maybe it's now up to 40. But at that point, no one told me what psychosis was. No one told me that I could be vulnerable. I've been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, so I have extreme highs and extreme lows. But not once did they say what psychosis was. So when it happened, I didn't know what was going on. But now I have the knowledge, and that's why I'm making this film. Psychosis comes in stages. It's cumulative. You have flight of ideas, racing thoughts, racing thoughts, sleeplessness. You think you're the chosen one. You have grandiose ideas. These are all symptomatic of psychosis. So if you recognize the signs, you can stop it. I never get beyond stage three these days. I'm not on medication. I understand the maze that is my mind now. And I know that other people need this knowledge. There are kids here in East London that are playing Russian roulette with their mental health. They're smoking skunk. Skunk has such potent levels of THC, they don't realize that they're playing Russian roulette with their mental health when they smoke that spliff, especially if their mother suffers from depression or their father has bipolar disorder. It's likely that they could be predisposed to having a mental health condition. And kids who are smoking skunk when they're 13, 14, when their brains are still developing, they're making themselves really vulnerable to psychosis. This is a global epidemic, you know. 
and we have to do something. We can't wait for governments, we can't wait for doctors and psychiatrists. There aren't enough to go around. You have to equip yourself with the knowledge. You equip yourself with the knowledge, you understand your mind, you understand how your mind works and you can deal with your mental health. Just as I have, you can. What happened to me was avoidable. It wasn't inevitable. And I've not had a psychosis since. And this is why I'm making this film. It's not just for people in the UK, it's for people all over the world that are suffering. Thank you.